All right guys, Thaddeus here. Welcome to today's video. In this one, I'm actually gonna be giving you guys more of like a story time of how I lost four figures, quite a bit of money, trying or in an attempt to transition my dropshipping brand or brands actually, as we'll get into the story soon, into a more branded private label brand at 17 and how I lost the exact amount is $3,816. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. And uh, I promise you guys that if you watch this whole video all the way through, which by the way, we now have outtakes at the very end of the video, which I mean, shit, like I think they're funny. If you do actually listen to this story, you will literally save yourself money, okay? Um, there are things that, especially with my younger audience and younger people watching this, that I had no clue about until I started entering into the whole private label branded side of things um, that I'd never had to deal with with dropshipping, but you know, it's 2019, you should be moving more towards that kind of thing. Without further ado, let's get into how I lost a bunch of money. So, as you guys may or may not know, my very first dropshipping store, the Instagram is at The Nugget Shop. We sold men's accessories, uh, rings, necklaces, hats, shades, um, the whole shebang, right? Just anything a guy that likes fashion um, would buy that's into the accessories range, wallets, phone cases, all that stuff, right? And that was my first store that did $70,000 in a month. Um, from there, I launched another store right after because I was like, you know, I, I think I was 16 at the time. I was like, hey, I'm a smart businessman. I got to diversify. So I launched another store with no custom content. Keep in mind, guys, my very first dropshipping drop store had custom content, which is why it did so well compared to everyone else who was, you know, starting out dropshipping back then. And this was when, you know, Instagram's story or Instagram's um, algorithm was still showing posts chronologically. So it was a good minute ago. Now, the other store I had, it was called the Covert Coin. I'll have Isaiah the awesome editor, throw up some screenshots of the Instagrams of each of those. Um, but that one did 13,000 in sales this first month with no custom content, selling the same things, okay? So I was pretty stupid in the sense that when I tried to diversify, I just made the exact same store selling the same shit. Um, just without custom content. Um, but that's, uh, again, I'm just sort of like giving you guys some backstory um, for this. So I had those two stores, um, both drop shipping, one with custom content, one with no custom content. And then I had this idea, you know, this, this amazing genius idea to transition into private label and white label so I could increase my margins. And so I could, again, just feel better about the brands and stuff that I'm selling because like they're actually like mine, they have my logo on it, and they're actually custom with the manufacturer, not just the logo stamped on a product, okay? So that's what I decided to do and that's what I started setting aside money that the store was generating for. Now, I made this brand called Three Bar Co. We'll also throw the Instagram up there, right? That one, that this is the my, my private little brand that, that failed, okay guys? This is the first private little brand that I got off the ground and then failed. Uh, so this is basically, again, more men's accessories and it was all bracelets, luxury bracelets that we were selling for a fairly high price point, guys. Now, again, and the products, all that stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. I followed everything basically to the T, and I'll tell you guys where I fucked up and how I lost that much money. Um, and that sort of began the spiral of the downfall of that business that did not have a very long uh, shelf life. Watch my last video about branding in 101. I was working with a bunch of suppliers on packaging custom products um, for these bracelets that we were selling for Three Bar Co. That, that was the name of the brand, okay? Three Bar and Co. So we had all these bracelets made, all right? I was um, working with manufacturers to get custom bracelets, two different manufacturers to do custom bracelets, okay? One was doing more leather goods and one was doing these, um, they were very, very trendy at the time, but uh, I think it was like, st like Stingray um, leather bracelets, not real, of course. Um, but yeah, it was like Stingray and like Python leather bracelets, which were super, super trendy in the men's Instagram fashion scene a few years ago. Um, still relatively are. After that, you know, we had the custom bracelets. I got those through. I got the custom leather bracelets ordered, you know, always get samples to check. Um, and I had custom packaging ordered. We had all three there. I was working with all these manufacturers at once to kind of coordinate all of this um, to get it to happen. I got all the samples. All the samples looked good. I didn't need to spend any money on molds and stuff for bracelets. So that was only like $200, $250 for everything. And then I inputted my RFQ for the bulk order, right? So to order large amount of inventory for each one of those things. So I believe I ordered 500 bracelets in the leathers, uh, 150 with the Stingray and Python goods, and then a bunch of packaging, bo packaging boxes, which I think were around 900. All that together, um, that, that was like the total order that I was you know, ordering. Um, I didn't lose those products, right? So that's not how I lost my money. Um, so again, when you're doing this and you're doing, if you're following it right and you still get to this point, you're, you're not, you're doing well. Um, there's just a few things on the side that, that really, really made me lose out. I put in the off queue. I ordered all the things in bulk, right? From those three different suppliers. I actually coordinated, I like, again, I was trying to bootstrap. That's how you've known starting all these businesses that I've ever started was through bootstrapping. I never, you know, have tried to like go out and get funding and stuff. Um, so I'm always, you know, trying to make it as cheap as possible. So I actually was able to coordinate with all three suppliers to actually ship out together from China all the way to the United States. Okay. So that was good. I was like, Hey, I'm on top of it. This is smart. Now they offered me, you know, they, they were like, okay, what kind of shipping method do you want? You know, there's DHL through, through the plane, 
or there's sea freight, which takes longer, but is a lot cheaper. Now, to put that in perspective, like air freight for, again, like five pallets of inventory was pretty expensive, okay? Now, it was about three times cheaper to go with sea freight, and I wasn't in a huge rush to get these products to market, okay? Because um, my branding strategy and everything wasn't super flushed out back then. I didn't know a lot. So I wasn't, you know, rushed. I was like, oh, I don't need to get these market, like these products to market like in three weeks. It wasn't like that. Um, so I, I chose Sea Freight, right? So I was like, I'm not in a rush. I'll do that. That's, that's perfectly fine. It's cheaper, saves me money. I'm being smart. So that's what we selected. They put all their shit on the boat and the boat took off and it's, you know, chugging down to, to the United States. And I send out the samples to these photographers, right, to go get custom content because that's how I want to launch the brand um, and do that, you know, the proper way to actually get sales, um, especially through Instagram because it's such a visual platform, okay? So I'm doing that. Everything's good. I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting <laughs> and I'm waiting. And then I get a phone call. Now, I usually don't pick up phone calls like that I don't know. Like if I don't know a number, I'm not picking up. I'll literally just watch the phone ring. But this number just kept spamming and spamming. So I picked up just to be able to like tell me, hey, put me off your phone list or something. But I answer and they say, hey, we have your cargo down in Long Beach, California. We like, wh what do we do with it? And I was like, what? And so I was under this stupid impression as you know, 17 years old, um, that when I ordered it, it would arrive at my door. Because, you know, growing up, when I ordered a package, it would arrive at my door, or the samples, it would arrive at my door. Um, that's not how this works, and <laughs> they never told me. So I was like, excuse me, what do you mean? And keep in mind, guys, I'm up in Seattle, Washington, and they should, the, the cargo landed at the Long Beach Terminal down in California. Okay, so I was like, I, I don't know what to do. I was on the phone with them, like, yo, I'm 17, I have no idea, I thought I was going to my house, blah, blah, blah. And so they're like, okay, well, who's your shipping agent? Um, so again, I didn't know I needed a shipping agent when I was ordering through Sea Freight. Okay, so I didn't know the guy on the phone was nice enough. He said, okay, I can act as your shipping agent for now. Uh, you just need to sign these papers and pay th this amount of money, which I think was like $200, okay? So now $200 um, that, again, I thought I was saving by choosing Sea Freight instead of um, DHL Air, okay? About that, he helps me like get you know uh, uh, get all my pallets off the boat. I'm assuming I don't know the exact process of that, um, but yeah. So I had I had the shipping agent. He helped me out, organize all that, and then he was um, he told me, okay, now how you know like where's your where's your truck to like actually get the product stuff from Washington? I told him again, I didn't know that it was gonna arrive in California, so I don't have a truck. So he's like, okay, well now we need to order a sort of transportation service to take these pallets down from California all the way up north to Seattle, Washington. So I was like, okay, great, that's perfect. Now I think that in itself was like $950 or almost a thousand um, just, just to do, just to ship those pallets from California all the way up to uh, Seattle, okay? So I was like, okay, let's do that. Cause I mean, there's nothing I can do. I can't just leave it there. They're charging me, keep in mind too guys, um, like when I wasn't picking up, they're charging me every single day to hold the, the cargo, right? Cause it's taking up space. It's taking up space where other, you know, Companies need that space, so they're charging for they're almost like they're charging for like rent that, that you're basically like using um, up in their warehouses and stuff. So I was being billed for that as well. So it's like I can't leave it there. I literally have to um, ship it up. So I did that, and then going from there, guys. Once it finally got up to Seattle, Washington, that was again like a four, four, six day delay um, to get up to Seattle. Um, I get a call and like, okay, hey, we're in Tacoma, which is almost two hours from where I lived at the time, and they're like, we have it at our warehouse here. Um, we, I think they called me at like 3.30 and they closed at 4. So they're like, we closed today, but we can come um, like the next business day. All right. And <laughs> where I also got shot, it was really just like bad luck and just be, really being unaware of the situation, guys. It was like a Friday and they, again, charge rent in their warehouse. So I was being billed Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, because that's the next day they opened. Okay. So four days of extra billing. I have to also hire a U-Haul truck to pick up the five pallets because that shit ain't going to fit in my... I think I had a Mazda at the time, so there's no way five pallets are fitting in that thing. So then from there, guys, I take the U-Haul, drive two hours to Tacoma, load it up with the pallets, pay them for the rent um, for everything, like to, for those four days of warehousing, and then drive it all the way back up to my house in Washington and unload the pallets, and they sat there in my parents' garage for a very long time, okay? So that in itself, guys, all those, all those small little fees, right? The rent from both sides of the warehouse, the one in Tacoma, the one down in Long Beach, especially the one in Long Beach because I didn't know they actually had the stores there for like a week or two while the phone was calling. Um, the cost of the shipping agent, all right? The cost of the actual sea freight, everything like that, it, it just added up and added up. Like the transportation, the truck transportation, the U-Haul, right? Like stupid fees, guys, that again, if you just know about it or are aware about it, you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of time, okay? And a lot of money. So 
after all that, guys, I was literally out like three thousand eight hundred and sixteen dollars just because of that silly mistake where I didn't realize I needed all these things to coincide with shipping through the sea freight option that my manufacturers gave me. Okay, now I didn't blame them or anything like that. It was completely my fault for just being unaware of the situation. I should have done more research. Um, but again, I hope you guys take a lesson from that. And again, if you if you are doing sea freight, which you do, if you have to, you know, if you have like um. Uh, certain types of liquids if you're selling like like people starting CBD companies um, I'm getting a lot of interest uh, with clients that you know we're building brands for that want to launch CBD companies so like stuff like that you need to do sea freight you can't ship that over the air They're, like there's certain regulations and stuff but most of the time you can ship most products through the air and I usually advise for that if that's what you're doing okay guys so I hope you guys enjoyed this video again it was really just a story time but I hope you guys kind of learned from that story time hopefully hopefully um, but yeah, guys, that, that's, the, that's, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like. Make sure to drop a comment. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. We are doing a video basically every other day, which is pretty gnarly because I haven't been able to stick to that for a very long time. So um, we are doing it now because I have a team of people that are going to yell at me um, if I don't, which is good. So yeah, that's, that's the thing, guys. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. It's late here. It's almost 2 in the morning. I'm going to knock out. Uh, I already said leave a like, comment, subscribe, but you can check the links down below, guys, if you want to get your own custom brand built, your own drop shipping store, um, all these different stuff that I've just kind of gave, uh, made for you guys to just offer more value to everyone that is interested. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace. video let's get this thing rolling all right um well just give myself a countdown just you know professionalism three two one um oh <laughs> what was that oh, oof, that was a burp <laughs> okay let's go